After Russia's February 2022 invasion of Ukraine, the world's heaviest and largest cargo aircraft in the world and the only one of its kind was destroyed. Taking its first flight in December 1988, the AN-225 Mraya, meaning dream in Ukrainian, was built during Soviet rule by the Kyiv-based Antonov company for the purpose of carrying the USSR's Buran spacecraft, just as the Boeing 747 did in the US with NASA's space shuttle. The Sol Maria made its world debut at the Paris Air Show in 1989 by flying in with the Buran orbiter on its back. But the USSR's fall meant that Maria's time with the Soviet space program was short-lived. The legendary plane ran a few missions in the early 1990s but mostly sat idle in Ukraine before eventually being revived as a commercial freighter in 2001. The AN-225 would live as Antonov Airlines' loyal workhorse for the next 21 years before its abrupt end during the Battle of Ukraine's Hostomel Airport, an event that saw the pride of the nation destroyed by Russian forces. The Antonov AN-225 was a strategic airlift cargo aircraft that retained many similarities with the preceding AN-124 airlifter that it was derived from. It had a longer fuselage and cargo deck due to the addition of fuselage barrel extensions that were fitted both fore and aft of the wings. The wings, which were anhedral, also received root extensions to increase their span. The flight control surfaces were controlled via fly-by-wire and powered by triple-redundant hydraulics. Furthermore, the impenage of the AN-225 was a twin tail with an oversized, swept-back horizontal stabilizer, having been redesigned from the single vertical stabilizer of the AN-124. The use of a twin tail arrangement was essential to enable the aircraft to carry its bulky external loads that would generate wake turbulence, disturbing the airflow around a conventional tail. The AN-225 was powered by a total of six Progress D-18T turbofan engines two more than the AN-124, the addition of which was facilitated by the redesigned wing root area. An increased capacity landing gear system with 32 wheels was designed, some of which are steerable. These enable the airlifter to turn within an A60 meter wide runway. Akin to its AN-124 predecessor, the AN-225 incorporated a nose gear designed to kneel so cargo can be more easily loaded and unloaded. Additional measures to ease loading and unloading activities included the four overhead cargo cranes that could move along the whole length of the cargo hold, each of which was capable of lifting up to 5,000 kilograms. To facilitate the attachment of external loads, such as the Buran orbiter, various mounting points were present along the upper surface of the fuselage. Maria had actually earned itself more than 100 world records during its lifetime, starting with its maiden flight in 1988 when it officially became the heaviest and largest aircraft in the world. One long-standing title was achieved in 2009 when the AN-225 set the record for airlifting the heaviest piece of equipment ever transported, an Alstom generator stator weighing 174 tons, which could only be flown to the landlocked nation of Armenia. Holding the weight of the mammoth plane were a total of 32 wheels, 28 in the main gear and 7 rows of 4, and 4 under the nose. The several dozen giant tires can handle the weight of a fully loaded AN 225, which has an incredible maximum takeoff weight of about 1.4 million pounds. The points guy reported the plane would carry spare tires on board during missions. If you're trying to imagine the scale of this behemoth bird, from tail to nose and wingtip to wingtip, it stretched about the size of a football fennel. According to Antonov, the full width of the wingtips was 290 feet and its nose-to-tail length was 276 feet. By comparison, the world's largest passenger jet, the Airbus A380 double-decker, is 261 feet across its wings and 239 feet in length. A Boeing 737-800 has a 112-foot wingspan and a length of about 130 feet, just a fraction of the size of the AN-225. Antonov initially hoped to fly the AN-225 into the 2030s, boasting the slogan, no other name carries more weight, but photos soon emerged after Russia's attack showing the sad reality. The New York Times reported the salvage operation started in March 2023, and pictures from April showed the debris removed and the area somewhat cleaned up. In the beginning of May, a decision was taken to start restoring the concrete hangar and to disassemble the roof above Roya so that it would not collapse. The Maria pilot, Antonov, told Aerotonmub in a June 2022 interview.
referring to May of that year. Later, when the Maria itself is extracted from there, we will start reconstructing the place. Now fresh images captured in the August shows the progress that Ukraine has since made on the AN-225 as it continues to salvage what it can of the jet. The twin tail fins, engines, several tires, and the wings have since been removed from the plane, leaving behind just the giant frame of the Merida. The AN-225 famously sported the Ukrainian colors of blue and yellow during its lifetime, and it appears the livery survived at least on the back half of the fuselage. The front belly, however, is still charred from the attack and is covered in ashy black. Meanwhile, the cockpit is also gone, and the jet is now surrounded by scaffolding equipment. The flight deck suffered some of the most damage during the attack. During his walkthrough of the site with Reuters, Antonov pointed to the cockpit and said, There's nothing left here. Other photos show the engineless wings and a few wrecked power plants sitting adjacent to the 8N225, among other parts. Compared with the spring of 2022, the scene looked quite different as the mess was slowly cleaned up. Even the hangar the plane sits in had been repaired, with its roof no longer caving in. But less have told insiders some parts could be saved, particularly the engines. D-18T engines were always rearranged between AN-225 and AN-124, so they are now used on Ruslands, he said. The deputy CEO of Antonov, Maxim Sanatsky, told the German media outlet Deutsche Welle in April 2023 that three of the 8N-225's six engines were repaired, and two went to the 8N-124 fleet as spares, something particularly helpful to Ukraine in the ongoing war effort. These photos show a stark change from the spring of 2022, when the 8N-225's wings were barely hanging on with burned and broken engines still attached. The image shows the 8N-225 in April 2022, with the wings and engines still attached. But both were gone by August 2023 as workers pulled everything they could from the wreckage, with the hope it could one day be restored. Despite the destruction, both Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Antonov said they were committed to rebuilding the legendary Maria, something the incomplete 8N-225 may be able to help with. People should have hope, Vladislav Lasik, the deputy director and chief engineer of Antonov, told the New York Times in March. They have to know this plane is not abandoned. Yes, there is a lot of work to do, but we are working. The comments come a few months after the plane maker announced on Twitter that design work in this direction has begun, referring to the rebuilding of the AN-225. At the time, Antonov said there was about 30% of components that can be used for the second sample. In May of last year, Zelensky also voiced his commitment to rebuilding the AN-225 using the abandoned Marina.